So Daddy's got a little um, surprise for you here. This is the first user-submitted beat. Someone sent me an email. Use this beat if you like. Thank me later. See if you brought that heat. I don't know where that come from. I'm pretty sure Joe is pretty sure Joe is circumcised. Uh just taking a wild guess. Maybe, maybe not. Uh but um Yeah. Shout out to all the uncircumcised people out there. Well, that's just Europeans. I don't know. It's kind of a crazy concept. Like one day a guy was just like, "We should just be like cutting that we should just be cutting that shit off." I'm like, who thought of that, bro? Y'all are weird for real. God made us that way, and you're just going to cut that. You're just going to... You're just going to... I mean, that's wild, man. And they be doing crazy stuff with it. They be putting it in little bottles, using it to power computers, using it to make creams and moisturizers, using it to feed... Um, you know, using it to eat... Because they're weird, man. <laughs> they be doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Stay well, Combs. Let's get right into the topic of this video. Uh, I, I briefly talked about this, um, the last video I made. It's kind of a follow-up. This idea that men, your prime is when you're 35, you're when you're 38. You just got to focus on yourself, man, and build up to when you're 38. And... Uh, well, let me just read this comment. It kind of exemplifies that point. And I want to, what I'm going to do is try to dismantle this idea. Not, I'm, keep in mind, okay, my purpose is not just to destroy this, any hope you have. I'm just trying to destroy these copes because there's bad advice here. And if you listen to, if you listen to it, you're worse off. This doesn't work anymore. You have to be smarter, okay? Well, let's just see. Men don't peak until their mid to late thirties, assuming they worked on themselves. That's the age they still look good and have their resources up. Men prefer younger women, women prefer older men. On dating apps, the most swiped age for women is 23. For men, it's 38. Women have a ton of options in their twenties, but it's short-lived because they struggle to conceive by age 35. Men that want families aren't getting with older women. So there's a concentration of men from all ages pursuing younger women. So focus and build on yourselves, so by the time it's your peak, you will have plenty of options as well. <clears throat> now, here's the thing. There's truth to this. The thing about dating apps is true. There's also, like, the most attractive men and women that are ranked by these magazines, and the average age for the most attractive man um, is always in their 30s, mid-30s, and the average age for women, they're always in their early 20s, Right? So, like, technically speaking, just um, generally, men are more attractive um, in their mid-30s. And, you know, I, I, can, I can actually agree with that. Some people who are black pill might disagree. It's like their hair, your hairline will go away. Uh, the reaper or whatever will take your hairline. <clears throat> there's, I guess there's some truth to that. But generally speaking, there is a lot of evidence to support men um, are more attractive in their mid thirties, but this is kind of, this is kind of an old idea. And this is something that is outdated and, uh, the, the application of it. So just focus and build on yourselves. So by the time it's your peak, you'll have plenty of options. That's, uh, there's a lot of problems with that. And here's the thing. <clears throat> 
I, t- I touched about it last time. It's the lack of experience. Because you're gonna, you're just gonna go all this time without any experience with women, and then what? By the time you're 35, after all this grinding or whatever, you're suddenly gonna know what to do. You know, you're you're not gonna know how to navigate these things, and you're gonna be such an old age. When you think about when women, I imagine, think about like an attractive older guy, they're not thinking about a 35, you know, guy in his late 30s who's inexperienced. They're thinking about a rugged traveled man who's been with a lot of women who knows how to charm a lady they're not thinking about a 35 year old virgin dude or someone who's like damn near a virgin someone who's had a couple whatever but who's you know doesn't know anything whose first relationship is going to be in their 30s you think (laughs) you think women would be attracted to that no that's that's goofy That's like a giant red flag, if you would think about it. Oh, this guy's 38, and he's, this is, I mean, come on, dude. They're not, they're thinking about someone who's already had the experience, and that's part of what make, what generally in the past would make 30, these, these men more attractive. Another thing is that, this is actually part of the problem, is that since the demographic pyramid is continually shrinking, people aren't having kids. Men and women aren't pairing up that are my age. So le- so I'm a teenager, right? In 15, 20 years when I'm in my prime, where are the young, where are the young women going to be? Because no one's having kids now. That's, that's part of the problem is that boomers <clears throat> can double and triple, day, triple dip into younger brackets of the dating market, they could date Gen X, they could date millennials, because there were continue, there were you know still more young people, Zoomers, and early millennials and stuff. They're not, they don't have this option because there's just there's way less young people. They don't have this pool of people to to date um, nearly as much. They outnumber them so much. It's just a it's just an even more hellish ratio. Then, then we already have, um, given the, uh, given what I talked about last time, how there's, there's two single men for every single woman. Um, and also this idea that you're just going to have a bunch of resources. Well, you know, let's just go with the idea that you'll have resources if you continually work on yourself. But here's the thing. I think it's unrealistic to expect someone to because it's like it said what did it say it said assuming they worked on themselves so let's get this straight people start self-improvement in their teens in their early 20s and you want them to constantly work on themselves for decades with like damn near in isolation with zero positive affirmation like at some point you have to see the yield for your hard work and expecting that over decades given all these things that's going on is just kind of it's kind of unrealistic and ridiculous that we have to even consider this like you're just gonna barely have any experience but it's okay just work for 20 years like that's normal like you have to do all this shit constantly try 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 do all this shit your ancestors like really didn't have to do did your dad have to improve himself for 20 years go to the gym constantly worry about macros all this horse shit uh you know invest in options you know be a sigma male did he have to do any of that to have you no no he didn't it just happened you know so i mean it's it's i mean given the uh the situation we're in today, it's fair to say, look, if you just go to the gym, you improve your hygiene, you do this this for like a few years, maybe five years tops, three years tops even. I like just, if you just give a few years of your life to really dedicate yourself and build good habits, you will see results. That's, that's not, that's not like a ridiculous expectation or it's not like a crazy thing to say given the material conditions of today. But 
to say like you should just constantly improve yourself for 15 years straight is just fucking stupid. Like at some point <laughs> you have to settle down, man. Like you, you should just see the results and start a family and have a and have like a have something. But it's just it's ridiculous. And that's another thing um cuz cuz I'm talking about like uh, this is in reference to the data that I pulled up last time of the the 63% of men are single and half of women are single in the same bracket. Um, and one of the explanations I just threw out there, because I'm winging it, I'm not going to be the most concise person. I have no script for these. I just say shit. But one of the explanations I threw out there is is older men dipping into that pool. And that is a factor, right? But that's not the main thing that explains the data. Um, because, and, and the way this, this comment sounds, it's just acting like this is natural. Like this is the way it's always been. No, dude, if you, if you look at the data, this is really messed up. 63% of young men were never single. This is not normal. This is not normal. You're acting like, oh, older, older men always dated younger women and young men were always just incels. No, young men always had to build experiences so they could become that old, attractive man. If you're just the guy who's <laughs> not, who's just in isolation, not having any experience by the time you're 35, you're not going to be attractive because you're going to, you're not going to have any thing to go off. You're, you missed out on young love. You missed out on experiences, vital social lessons you cannot learn by watching self-improvement videos, going to the gym, doing any of this horse shit, <clears throat> you know? Um, but yeah, so the whole thing about older men dipping into the younger dating pool, this does not explain the data. There are many things that um, have you know, impact. It's, it's a multifaceted issue that explains the rising male singledom and how half of young women are. There's a little, there's the whole polygyny thing, which also might be relatively a small factor. There's just general female disinterest in dating. Because if you also look at the article and at the previous Pew Research study, most young women are just aren't interested and here's the thing, the difference between the data collected in 2019 and the data, the new recent data I pulled up from 2022 that I talked about last video is that a lot more men started leaving. They started saying they're not interested either. They're, it's like, I wouldn't say they're giving up, but they're just like, maybe they're, they're kind of doing this attitude. They're focusing on themselves, building themselves. But it's just like the fundamental aspects of society to build relationships aren't there and, it's, and women only have access to them because of their higher social capital um i should have wrote down like all the uh because i was thinking about it before all the different things that contribute to the data there's some things i'm missing you can put them in the comments but it's not all older men dipping down into younger brackets um, that's not what it is. It's a lot of stuff going on because the average age gap in relationships is still only like three years. It's not like, it's not a big distance. Um, so it just this, the idea that all these older men are just doing that isn't statistically accurate. It's part of it but not the biggest, it's not the biggest contributor. And also, here's just a finishing thought I had. Um, thinking about that data, and if you also look at like the different ages, this is a uniquely a young person issue because it's only in that bracket where it's, where it's so bad. If you go to the, the, like, the older brackets, it's not as bad. And this is not because they're dating 20-whatever-year-olds it's just, uh, well, that's part of it, but it's, they're, they're like dating in the same bracket, given what we have, given the information we have with the average age gap in relationships. Back to what I was saying. Um, 
yeah, if you go to the older brackets, it's like half as bad. Um, so if this is a uniquely a young person issue. And I remember in like seventh grade, I was hanging out with this kid and, um, he told me something that kind of stuck with me. He was the kind of, he was like a popular kid. He got a lot of girls. And I think he knew I, I wasn't really, uh, well, I, was, I wasn't really the only kid. There were a lot of kids who just weren't having any experiences with women. But he told me, he was like, if you ever feel sad about not getting girls or like worried that you won't be able to girl, get a girl, just remember like all your ancestors did it. Like your bloodline came all the way here so like you there's no reason you shouldn't be able to and at the time I was like yeah that makes a whole lot of sense uh looking back on it it doesn't really make sense I think look I'm not going to say that uh I'm not going to take a totally deterministic stance here that you can't do anything to improve your situation but if you look at pictures of your dad or maybe like maybe whatever your grandfather on your mom's side or something if you, I'll just say your dad. If you look at pictures of your dad when he was like a young man, when he married your mom, and because my parents are boomers, I look at I could look at uh, pictures of my oh, because this this is brutal. My parents were together when they were my age. I remember uh, when I turned nineteen, they were like, "Wow, uh, when we were nineteen, we were dating." My mom was like, I was flying out to see your dad. Oof, that was brutal. Holy moly. And they're in like their 60s now. But anyways, um, <clears throat> look at pictures of your dad when he was young and think about it using the information you have now. Would he be able to make it today? Like a lot of these guys, like a lot of your dads would be incels today, you know, and a lot of these older guys who think it's just like, no, man, just wait till you're 30. They have no idea what's going on. They would be incels today. They would be you. So it's just kind of crazy. They just lack the perspective. Um, yeah, my dad, he would have a tough ride. <laughs> he would have a tough ride. He was a, my, my mom's taller than my dad. Thank God I got some of her like height genetics. He was like five, seven and like 120, uh, maybe, maybe 120 is light, but he was a really, he was a turbo twink, man. And, um, yeah, I don't know if he would, he would be able to make it today. So <clears throat> that's just the thought I had. And, uh, look, even if you look at your dad and you're like, I have these bad genetics, he wouldn't make it today. I would still, you know, I would still advise trying or whatever, but it's hard. You know, I definitely, after doing research into, like, genetic determinism, they say it's not, like, fully deterministic. It's probabilistic. This is what all, like, the, the gene researchers say. Genes aren't deterministic. They're probabilistic. But basically what that means, they look at height, and they say there's, like, an 80% heritability. IQ, pretty high heritability. Um, you know, size of hands, weight, these all have a high heritability. So they say it's probabilistic, but um, really what that means is like they're, they're still very, very important. You're still very much, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. I guess I follow, I guess, I don't know. It's hard to know what to think because I do think your decisions matter. I don't believe in complete all this, you know, hard determinism. I guess a good analogy is that it like it's your hand. You know. It's your hand in like a game of poker or whatever. And that's a big deal. The, the what you draw is a massive deal. You could still play your cards in a certain way to change your outcomes, but guys who have, you know, the full house, have all the best cards, they, you know, it's whack because everybody's like, oh, they, they only care that they won. They don't really get 
not everybody seems to truly, uh, well, I guess they intrinsically know, but they don't get it. It's just, it is pretty influenced by luck, just what you get, what you're, how you're born. So, yeah, pretty brutal way to end it off, but uh, have a blessed day.